Welcome to those in the building. Welcome to pre-service prayer. And for those of us who are watching online, welcome. Let us prepare our hearts today as we seek to worship God, as we seek to uh, bless his name. I just want to, in my quiet time this morning, this song came, and I just thought that um, it would be appropriate to share. It says, it's just, I'm just going to use one verse. It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our intercessor, our brother, our shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. He is our stability in this life. Let us pray. Let us stand together this morning and just talk to our Father in heaven. Let us begin with thanksgiving. The Lord likes it when loves it when we approach him with thanksgiving. The Bible says we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So, Father, we are here today, Lord, in your holy presence. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength in our bodies, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today, Lord, by your spirit, for drawing us into your house, O oh God into your holy presence, Lord, where you want to meet with us, O oh God, as a people, as your people. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, the chief cornerstone, the solid rock on which we stand. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the foundation of our lives. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for causing our faith to stand. We know we can't stand alone and we cannot do it by ourselves. But in you, Lord Jesus, faith in the Father grows. We are strengthened. Thank you for strengthening us. Strengthening us with your mighty power on the inner man. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And your word, oh God, that guides our path. Lord, we want to thank you for your love. You love us more than we can even think or imagine, Lord. Your love has no bounds, O oh God. Thank you for loving us, Lord God. Thank you for reminding us today, Lord, through the words of this song, that we ought not to trust, O oh God, in just what we can see and trust in our own strength or trust in the help of man, but we are trusting you, Jesus, wholeheartedly. Can we just express our love for Jesus right now? Like the woman with the alabaster box. That we would spare no expense in our worship. But that I pray this morning that we will have a breakthrough in this place. That we can feel and we can see and we can sense. And we can touch this God that tells us that he loves us. And in return, we can return the love. Father, we pray for sweet surrender in this place this morning, oh God. 
Lord, I pray this morning, Lord Jesus, for our hearts. Let us pray for our hearts that they will be open and they will be receptive because God is here. He is here. He is here. He is waiting for us to reach out and touch him. There's a little song that says, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He is not too busy to hear your cry. What is your cry this morning? What is your cry this morning? Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would lay aside pride and we would lay aside shame and we would lay aside anger and we would lay aside sinfulness and everything else, so God. And just cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Like blind Bartimaeus, they say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me, Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Lord, let there be a cry from your people, Lord, this morning. Holy Spirit, we cannot do without him. He is our helper. So let us just open our mouths right now and open our spirits. I pray that our spirits be open. Open to the Holy Spirit this morning in the name of Jesus. So we say, welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. We are in your presence. That is a fact that we are in your presence. But how much we receive from you is dependent on us. So I pray this morning that we will approach you with open hearts. Help us to have the right response to you today Holy Spirit let us have open hearts in the presence of the living God knowing that the Lord is here to help us he is here to heal us he is here to deliver us he is here to provide for us the Lord is here the presence of the Lord is here we just want to thank you oh God for your Holy Spirit and your holy presence Come and soften our hearts to receive fully from the Father. Do you know that we can receive partially from God if there are restraints on our lives and restraints on our, our spirits? I pray this morning that we will receive fully from the Lord. God, when God sends the rain, he doesn't send a partial rain. He send the rain. He send full raindrops. So let us be open this morning to the presence of God because he is here. He is here. Jesus is here. And we welcome the spirit of Christ in this place and in our lives. Break down our walls, Holy Ghost. Break down the walls. Break down every wall of, of, of resistance in our hearts. Break down every wall of resistance in this place. Break down the walls that are resistant and make us resistant to the praise worship when it begins. Break down the walls that make us resistant to hear the word of God. Break our walls down, Holy Ghost. Surely, surely today, we will know the presence of the Lord is in this place. As the song says, I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels wing. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, God. In this place today, Lord. Yes, God. Let us know, Lord, that the heavenly host is here because we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to Mount Zion where there is a numerous company of angels. The spirit of just men made perfect. And they are watching us. The Father is there. Jesus is there. And they are watching us this morning to see what our response will be. Let there be a surely Lord. Let there be a surely that flows from somebody's lips this morning. The assurance to know that your presence, Lord, is in this place. In spite of our circumstances and our situations. Let's just take them off the throne of our hearts. Remove them from the throne of your hearts. The only person that is supposed to be enthroned on your heart is Jesus Christ. Not your money problem. Not your marital problem. Not your children problem. Not your psychological problem. The only person that is supposed to be enthroned on your heart this morning is Jesus. I promise you if you, if you give him his rightful place. In your life and in this worship service this morning. That he will turn things around. He will turn things around. I just want us to pray into this scripture. From Acts chapter 3 verse 19 and 20. He says. This was Peter. In his preaching to the church just after Jesus left. He says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Repentance, refreshing. Repentance, refreshing. Repentance, refreshing. And the spirit of Christ in our midst. Let us pray this morning. Father. We seek your forgiveness and we come, Lord God, to turn away God from attitudes and from actions and from wayward thinking, ways that are not pleasing unto you, Father God. Father, we turn from those things this morning. Myself, Lord, and us as a people here, Lord God, we turn, oh God, from ways of thinking and ways of attitude and actions that are displeasing unto you. We turn from those things, Lord. And we turn to you, Father. Because like Peter, Lord, we want to be converted, Lord God. We want to be converted, Lord Jesus. I pray that your spirit will break through to somebody this morning to realize that until we are converted, we cannot bless others. We cannot strengthen the brethren. That was Jesus' word to, to Peter. He says, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. But repentance has to go before. Spirit of the living God, let there be genuine repentance coming from us. And in this place today, every soul in this place, a spirit of repentance, we will examine ourselves, O oh God, in light of your holiness, in light of your word, in light of your righteousness, O oh God. Oh, Father, help us. Let's say together, Father, help me. 
Father, help me to be right with you. Help me, Lord, to be right with you. Help us to run to Jesus and no one else. Because on Christ, the solid rock, we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The Bible says, vain is the help of man. We got to know that our help is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one else, nothing else. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. Our help is in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. Let us thank the Lord for uniting his church. Uniting his church. And when I say uniting his church, this is not just for Pentab. Uniting his church in this city, in this region, this province called British Columbia, that everybody says, oh, it is the worst place to have a church because the spirits of the enemy are so strong. No. God is uniting his church. And Father, we just want to thank you. Let us thank the Lord for uniting his church. Thank you, Lord, for uniting your church. Thank you, God, for gathering your people, Lord, in this hour. A people, oh God, who are called by your name, who are willing to humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, oh God, turn from their pride and arrogance so that you can heal the land, God. You are waiting for us to be united. You are waiting for us to fall in repentance before your faith. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, not by our denominations, not by the names by which, Lord, our churches are known, but, Lord, by the name of Jesus Christ. Let's just pray that the body of Christ will be a pillar of support for one another. And stop tearing each other down by our doctrines and philosophies and whatever else that has nothing to do with the Christ that we serve. So, Lord, help us. Help your church, Lord, in this region and across this nation, Lord God. Help us, oh God, to be a support, a pillar of support for one another. Lord God, that, that scripture that says iron sharpens iron, that Father, surely, Lord God, we will begin this process, Lord God, of building up one another instead of tearing one another down, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that we would strengthen one another in this hour, Lord. Let it not be said of us, Lord, that we are divided or we continue to be divided while the world is, wake, is working together. The devil is working over time. And while we are fighting, there is a world that is waiting on us to be rescued. There is a world that is waiting on us to be healed. There is a world that is waiting on us to be delivered. Father, we pray, oh God, that it will be turned around. Let it be turned around, Lord, for your people, God. Let's pray for the pastor this morning. As he brings the word. And for the worship team. As they come to minister. We say not by might. Not by power. But by your spirit Lord. By your spirit's power God. Let the word be preached. By your spirit's power God. Move on the heart of your servant, Lord. Move in his spirit, Lord. As he speaks, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus. By the Spirit's power. Let the singers sing. 
Let the musicians play in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that we will listen carefully to what you're saying to us today. That we would listen carefully, God, for that now word, that Rima word. That we will listen carefully, oh God, for that Rima word. That you are sending our way this morning, Jesus. I pray that nobody will leave here empty. But we will leave here full. In the name of Jesus. I want us to do something this morning. For the prayer team that is gathered here. That we will pray over this altar. And we will bless the congregation. We will pray for the people that are coming. That we will bless them. That the spirit of God will be released in this place. And that the, the, the forces of darkness will have no way. They will go out the door. Every opening. Every opening by which they came through. So, Father God, this morning, we sanctify this altar. We sanctify this place, Lord. All about this altar, God. We sanctify this place, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, let them feel your presence. Uh, let the musicians feel your presence. Lord, let them feel your presence. Let the singers feel your presence. Let the pastor feel your presence. Lord, let the people feel your presence. We release the spirit of the living God. We release the Holy Spirit uh, into the congregation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we say move by your mighty power. Move by your mighty power in this place. All power. All power. Lord, like David says, we will experience your power and your glory in the sanctuary, Lord God. The people will experience your power. They will experience your glory in the sanctuary, Lord. There will be a rising of our worship. Like sweet incense to our Father. And he in turn will pour down his blessing like rain on us today, God. So, Father, we thank you. We say, Lord, do the exceeding. Do the abundant. Above all we can ask or think, Lord God. Do the exceeding. Do the abundant. Above all we can ask or think in this place, Lord. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way. And we bless your holy name, Jesus. And we say, Jesus, you be exalted. Because there is no one like you. There is no one like you. And on that promise, we will, that premise, we will worship you this morning. Knowing that there is none like you. There is no one that cares for us like you do. So we thank you, Lord. And we bless you. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated and just maintain an attitude of prayer and worship until the praise team comes.
goes before me. He goes before me. Ooh. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Ooh. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Thank you, Jesus. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Jesus. I won't fear. Just shout Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. God created me for a specific purpose. In light of the fact that Jesus was crucified to take away the sins of the world. In light of the fact that sin has disfigured the world and has left people depressed, dejected and in despair. I pledge to be consumed with the greatest commission heralded to mankind by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This commission declared in Mark 16, 15 is to preach the gospel to the world. Preaching becomes a natural way of life if I follow Mark 6, 8 and do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before God and man. I fulfill my role to preach the gospel when I preach like Christ preached, as recorded in Luke 4, 18 and 19. I preach when I minister to the poor. I preach when I minister to the brokenhearted. I preach when I minister to those in captivity. I preach when I minister to those who are blind and in darkness. I preach when I minister to those who are bruised. I preach when I amplify the urgency of accepting Jesus Christ today. If I preach as Christ preach, somebody will be ministered to. If I preach as Christ preach, heaven and earth will rejoice. If I preach like Christ preach, the forces of evil would be dispelled. If I can be involved in the great cause of Christ, then I will find a purpose for which to live and the purpose for which to die. I pledge to spend the hours God has granted me preaching Christ crucified. Together in love and unity, as we preach Christ crucified, our church will grow. Warmer to fellowship. Stronger through worship. Brother through ministry. And larger through evangelism. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord? A little bit louder. I think, amen. I like that song because you know what? God is pleased when we really shout and, you know, I like when, when we really like we open our hearts to God with that. Can we say it once again? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to thank all of you for coming today to our service. It's just so amazing that we see each other every Sunday. You know, it's amazing that every culture are here. And I was just so amazed. Don't you find it so amazing? Amazing that how God put us together with different culture, different faces, different pigmentation, but you know, we serve one God. Amen. So as we go to a time of worship, let's just pray that God will fill our hearts today. Oh Father, we thank God for your goodness in our lives for waking us up today, oh God. We want to praise you, oh God, for Father, as we submit everything to you, oh God. Let your will be done in our lives, oh God, today, oh God. And whatever, whatever things that are holding us and worshiping you, O oh God. Father, we commit everything to you, God. We surrender everything to you, O oh God. For your glory alone, O oh God. And Lord, by, by saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we submit everything to you, O oh God, in your name. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and mercy. And we give you praise.
praise and honor, but it belongs to you, O God. Your glory and honor belongs to our God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Can we say yes, Lord?
the prayer leaders or one of the leaders in our church, I want you to come and stand somewhere in the front here and face the audience. Some of our prayer leaders and church leaders, will you come and stand at the front here, please? Let's face the church. Praise God. stand here and just face the audience. Thank you. If you are here today with a very specific need, need of healing, a very personal need in your life, I want you to come and just stand in front of these prayer people. Pastor Ajay, can you come a little closer? Some of you come on a little closer this way. I'm going to invite you to come and stand in front of these people and they will pray for you. We have anointing oil. Michelle, I'm going to give this to you. And um, just when they come, just anoint them with oil. If you'd like to be prayed for specifically today for some personal need as the praise team sings again, will you come forward right now and we'll just pray with you and uh, stand in front of anyone you want. Come, there are people on this side as well. Come and stand in front of them and they'll pray for you. Let's sing. Worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Will you receive your healing? Believe the Lord to do what Worthy only He can do. Yes. Worthy is your name. Whatever your need is, Jesus. He'll do it. He oh, He deserves a praise. Just wait in line, just wait in line for someone to pray with you. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes.
stand with us, please? Let's just worship the Lord.
your healing right now will you say thank you Jesus will you by faith receive your healing in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name worship him now worship him now oh someone shout hallelujah someone shout hallelujah demonstrating faith by not just asking but also rejoicing uh, we don't just petition the Lord we praise him can you say amen uh, David can I have a bit more in my monitor please we don't just petition the Lord we also praise him and just for another minute or two or a few, will you just praise the Lord with us? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. just a little bit now Dave thank you so much praise God welcome to everyone who is here in the building or online wherever you hail from God bless you for your your attendance your participation your you're just everything God bless you so so very much and I want to 
give a shout out to all of our guests who are here today and I know quite a few of you are here and some are with the Gamma group of companies and we welcome you to Penta. Will you clap your hands? And, and, uh, if this is your first time here, we won't put you on the spot too much, but can you just wave at us a little just so we can see you? Boom, 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 boom. Yes, indeed. Oh, my Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, hey, Tom. Tom, will you just run down here for a second? I, I, we got to hear Tom's voice. Tom and Marie have been here for a few weeks. Uh, this is their second home. They kind of hang out in Cayman, and uh, they have been here for the last few weeks. And last weekend, they um, they had a, a session and and I ministered to some of our folks. Uh, Tom is one of the uh, the mentors to Marcelo and to Alexia. And uh, whenever he's in the building, we want to hear from him. So I'd like him to greet us. Will you like to hear his voice? Of course. Well, greetings from Cayman and the Caribbean Islands. And before I even say any more, I have to introduce my beautiful wife, my better half, Marie. Will you just stand and wave at everybody? Marie. Apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, she's the reason why I tick. Amen? Yes, yeah, so we are, we are here assisting your dear Alexia in seminars. Because we have dedicated, Marie and I, our latter years. I'm not 54, I'm not 64, I'm a little bit. So we've dedicated our latter years to working with families. I'm not going to pass. How long do I have? Two. Yeah? This is what we do. This, we are, this is what we're passionate about. And what we have discovered over the years is that families is truly the foundation of our societies. Yes? And if you have broken families, what do you get? The society spirals down. So this is why we... We're so passionate. And over the last few, two weeks, this weekend, Alexia, myself, and darling Marie, we did an empowering relationship seminar. And guys, this morning you were singing about giving thanks, giving praise, miracles that our Lord has done in our lives. If pastor allows it, and I'm really hoping he will, we need a couple persons that attended that seminar to come in and just address you and tell you what it did for them. What I noticed, you know, guys, is that we all, we're all born again Christian, most of us, majority of us in this room. But we carry in us burdens, emotional and otherwise, that affects our just being able to discharge what God has gifted us with in societies to make a difference. We carry it. We try to impart still, but because we're carrying all these issues, we're never 100%, eh? We actually look, actually we can be quite confusing is in how we deliver to the persons that God has placed in our, in our, in our sphere of influence. So we're not impacting. We're not Doing what God wants us to do. The direction he's giving us. We know that some of us do know the direction. But we are incapable because of the burdens we carry. And this is what we hope to do in Family Foundations International and Caribbean. Marie and I are the directors for the Family Foundations Caribbean Islands. And Africa is really a part of our remit right now. Like Craig Hill who is a founder. He says... Africa is your tribe too. So just go with that. So we're actually trying to impact Africa as well. But I, without further ado, though, I, it's a pleasure and a privilege, Pastor Drysdale, for even occupying this space for a brief moment. And I thank you for listening. Kindly check with Alexia and the persons who went through this last weekend seminars for what God is waiting on you to impart in your lives, for you to be effective 
Christians. Amen? God bless you. I wish I had longer. I'd like to just deliver something really heavy. <laughs> Pastor, thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Maria, uh, Patrick's Maria is having a birthday today. Happy birthday, Maria. And... Um, I had planned to give her a shout out, but Patrick, who isn't here, he sent me a text and he said, Pastor, make certain you give a shout out to Maria for her birthday. So happy birthday, Maria. Praise God. And just everyone who is here. Boy, what a great group of people that's in the building. I know others are coming in and there's a whole lot of things being organized outside as well. And so, boy, today is quite the day, quite the day. Today we're having our annual picnic and it promises to be amazing. And um, it's going to involve lots of food. Uh, you're going to have uh, lots of choices to eat from and lots of stuff to, to, um, to be able to partake of. And someone asks if it's free. Of course it's free. It's free. And so after the service, you get a chance to hang around and, and be patient, okay? The lines might be long, but just stay in the line and fellowship and go around and do different things and, and just hang around and just, just, just be patient with us and we'll get to you. But we have lots of food being prepared for you and it's just going to be a great time. Is the, is the jerk center, is the jerk center there? When I came there earlier, I didn't see the jerk center. Is it there already? Anybody know? Marcelo, is, is, is Chase there? He wasn't there. Can you just make a call to Duane and Chase for me and make sure that they're here because they, they better have those chicken and stuff ready by the time we finish service. So see if they have any problems with rides coming here. I know Duane should be helping. Praise God. We're also having outdoor baptisms today. This is the first time we'll be doing that here at Pent at PA, and so bear with us, but we have uh, clothing ready for you so that you can um, change into, if you, on the spur of the moment, you decide to get baptized, uh, just come, sir. Sorry, guys. I would be sadly amiss if I didn't invite <laughs> my dear brother Michael. <laughs> Just come up and say what impacted you, how it transformed, what took place in this moment. Good day, everybody. Um, just to say, on Monday morning, went to work. I've been struggling with a heart issue for the last uh, six months. Uh, AFib, which causes my heart to go from my regular heartbeat of 70 up to 160, 170, causing me immense anxiety. I haven't slept f through the night for probably the last four months. Uh, just the stress of being evicted from our home, having to move, having a crazy lady move into our house for a bit, and thank you, God, that she's gone. Um, anyhow... At the beginning of the week, I did not think that I would be able to mentally go to this fantastic 12 hours, which we thought was going to be long. I wish it was 24 hours. It was so impactful. Uh, the first night uh, was a four-hour session, and it dug deep. And then we have what... In this um, course, there's small groups. There was about six of us that were in a group together, and we got in and prayed, and then we shared, and I was amazed at how, in this course, it deals with not what's just going on right now, but the foundations that are deep, that are in us from our childhood. Stuff came up for me that I had not even thought about that I could correlate between then and now. G Jesus is my savior. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. And the lies that were coming into my heart, I, I'll be honest, I was suicidal 
for the last couple of weeks. I was I couldn't sleep. Three o'clock in the morning, dark, dark thoughts were coming in my head. Just to say, after that Friday night session, I had my first full sleep. Got home, read the Bible for ten minutes, slept from ten thirty till six thirty in the morning, and. The breakthroughs that you will have if you take this course, I pray everybody, I just pray everybody takes the time, doesn't look at 12 hours as being a long time, the closeness, the brotherhoods, the sisterhoods that we built in those small groups, it has blasted my heart open, absolutely blasted my heart open. I love you all and thank you so much for this group. You know, when someone comes in and is so transparent before our church, I just feel like we need to just stand and just give God honor right now. Let's take a minute or two. Can we just clap our hands to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. And the Lord is rebuking the devourer in Jesus' name. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life. In Jesus' name, life. Life. Life! In Jesus' name, we speak life over every adult, over every young person, over every child. We speak life in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. We're going to be having outdoor baptisms today. And if you'd like to be baptized, maybe you didn't plan to get baptized, but maybe something has already been said or will be said throughout the course of today that will challenge you. And um, just see any of our leaders, if you don't know who the leaders are, just, just see anyone that looks like a leader in our church, and they will point you to someone, okay? And we have dress, uh, we have clothes for you to change into, and then we have clean towels to get you all dried off afterwards. And so we want you to come and, and be a part of this um, time of baptism. So we're going to do the baptism right after the service we're going to head outside uh, towards the picnic area and then you get a chance to be baptized and then we continue with the rest of the afternoon and in addition to the baptisms in addition to the picnic which will include food and lots of fun we also have the Gamma group of companies here with us today. And the Gamma family are members of our church. Sometimes they're not here because the boys are always in some form of... Um, uh, uh, North American type football or or soccer or something is and then their company but we're so glad that they are here today and uh, members of the the company and so after service we are going to be having also a job fair so while we're having fun playing soccer fun with track and field and eating and all of that you will see different uh, tents for a job fair with the gamma group of companies and so if you're here and you would like a job you are welcome to make application in addition we're going to be having a demo rodeo demo of um, we have a forklift in we have uh, professional trainers here, and they're actually going to be doing some exercises and showing you some fun things with, um, with uh, the forklift, and maybe a few of you will even get a chance to take it for a spin in a very safe way. And so it's going to be a very fun-filled day, and we want everybody to be safe, have fun, and, and, um, and apply for jobs, and, and um, we're just going to be there for each other. And it's going to be a great day and somebody say amen. amen someone shout hallelujah this week is another great week in the house of the lord regular routine per bible study healing our sessions and just we continue doing god's will and we know there are some folks who are traveling back from vacation uh, today actually and so Others will be here hopefully by next week. And we just continue to work for the Lord and, and just do our best. Can you say amen? Uh, most of the Sunday school teachers are outside on the field somewhere preparing the picnic areas and all of that. And so 
today, unfortunately, kids, you're going to have to stay with us for uh, the service instead of having your own Sunday school because most of the staff uh, are next door preparing, okay? And so, parents, I'm going to ask you to help me, all right? I know we can't always have the kids 100%, but the, the rooms are also set up in case you need to just run out with the kids and, and just watch them a little there because um, although it's a dress down day and although it's a picnic day, I feel a, a word from the Lord to preach to God's people. We want to hear from the Lord and we want to deliver a word. So will you stand with us, everybody? Will you stand with us at this time? And uh, kids, guests, guests, everybody, let's just stand and praise God. Michael, that was a very powerful testimony you shared, and I'm sure Alexia and Marcelo and Tom and Maria are, are appreciative of your uh, transparency, and um, God is going to help us. Praise God. God is going to help us. Will you turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 18, beginning at verse 18. Luke 18, 18. 18, 1, 8. Praise God. <clears throat> Once a religious leader asked Jesus this question. Good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard his answer, the Lord said, there is still one thing. Everybody say one thing. Everybody shout one thing. Somebody online text one thing. There is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad. For he was very rich. A very rich man became very sad. With the help of the Holy Spirit on this another Great Sunday where God's people are gathered online and in person to consider the word of the Lord, to consume the word of the Lord, and hopefully to be changed by the word of the Lord. I wish to conclude uh, the sermon series that we have been preaching on entitled Inviting Jesus to church. Inviting Jesus to church. I want to thank so many of our family members for inviting so many people. And we're closing out the summer months and there's so many people here. Will you clap your hands onto the Lord for just all the people who are here? We're glad someone invited you. And we're glad you came. And we want to preach about inviting Jesus to church. Will you be seated? Those online, you may be more comfortable online. But please don't be flipping between the sermon and some commercial, okay? We want you to be focused now on the sermon. Praise God. And parents, just help us with the kids the best you can. And we'll work with them as well. Because this is a family church. Our text is generally known as uh, the story of the rich ruler, or some say the rich young ruler. An important observation about our text is that this rich ruler 
was almost perfect. This rich ruler kept the Ten Commandments. And Jesus uh, said of this rich ruler that he needed to do just one more thing to be perfect. Just one more thing. Maybe more aptly, this story should be known not so much as the rich ruler, but as the almost perfect person. Or if you want to keep the rich in it, maybe we should call this text the almost perfect rich person. Because a great trait about this person was that he was rich. But a very, another important part of this person's life is that he was almost perfect. Now, if you and I would... Uh, hi, Monica. You can come on this side, Monica. There is um, there's Danny. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Sammy. These are members of um, the Gutierrez family, actually from Colombia. Yeah, will you clap your hands for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if anyone says to you that you have only one thing left to do to be perfect, that's quite the accomplishment. Let's break this down. If your professor told you that out of a hundred questions... You only got one wrong, one incorrect. That's, that's really amazing. And uh, if your boss told you that you are excelling in your, in your job, in, your, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the office that you hold, um, in the position that you have, if you're excelling in it, except for just one area, that's pretty good. If your spouse told you, that you are almost the most perfect specimen of masculinity or femininity that they have ever seen. Boy, you're, you have it going on. If, you're, if your parents told you that you're almost a perfect son or almost a perfect daughter that they could have ever dreamed to, to have. That's pretty good. If your children told you that uh, you only have one fault that they could find in you, that's pretty good. Can you imagine if you could say of your pastor, my pastor is almost perfect? <laughs> or of your church, this is an almost perfect church? Can you imagine if someone can say that you only have one thing that you need to improve on? Based on Jesus' assessment of this rich man, he was as good as it gets. He's almost perfect. Almost perfect. And Jesus told this rich, almost perfect, perfect man to sell all that he owns and then to give it to the poor and to then follow him the bible says that this man became very sad because he was very wealthy you see giving up his wealth was difficult for this almost perfect rich man because his idea Identity was wrapped up in his wealth. People knew him as the rich man. Maybe he was also known for being a generous man. And so people knew him for being generous. And he liked to give. Just as long as he didn't need to give up everything. Before we conjure 
bad feelings, that word conjure means, before we start to do the things in our minds and, and make um, our own impressions of this, of this almost perfect man and say, what a, what a, what a guy, what a guy. Before we do that, let's not be too quick to judge this fellow. Because if tomorrow morning, suddenly, all of us in this building became billionaires. And then the next day after that, the Lord says, give up everything that you earn and you have. I'm not so certain we'll be willing to give up everything. Would you give up everything? Let's test it. Let's test it right now. Let's test it. Let's test it. I would like to see a show of hands of the people who drove to church today, who before this service is over, if I told you to give the car keys to a total stranger in this church, let me see the show of hands of those who are willing to give up your car. I saw one hand. <laughs> Let's drill a little further. If by the end of this service, your pastor told you to sell your house and take all the proceeds and give it to the poor, let me see the hands of those who will say, yes, pastor, I'm ready to do it. Not seeing any hands. Let's try a little further. I, let's, you know, I want us to be realistic here. I want us to do a reality check today. At the end of the service, it is our custom to have people line up here and um, invite you to give in the offering. Let me see the hands of those at the end of the service today who are prepared to empty your bank account and give in the offering today. Let me see the show of hands. All right. So the truth is, we better not be too quick to judge this wealthy man who was almost perfect. Because the truth is, if we were placed in the same situation as him, we would probably respond in similar fashion. Jesus' request was not just that this man should sell what he has and give it to the poor. Jesus then went further and, and made an invitation to this man to follow him. To follow him. And so, it was really a two-part uh, proposal, proposition. Sell and give up. And then, follow me. The follow me part is also a challenge for this almost perfect person. Because when you have wealth, you have identity. But not only do you have identity, you have purpose. Because if you have wealth, you got to manage it. And if you don't manage your wealth, it won't take long before you don't have the wealth. So if you have wealth, you got to manage it. And so this almost perfect rich man probably was able to plan out his, his days uh, months if not years in advance because he had to schedule everything to manage his wealth. Maybe if he had property in B.C., he had, he had to plan out which days he was going to go visit his properties. And if he had properties in, in somewhere in the States, maybe he had to plan out when he would have to travel to go check on that property. And he had to be doing different things and meeting with other people who he might have put in charge to manage his affairs. He had to do all these things and plan out when to, 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 to go and visit and then when to monitor to see how his, his different investments are doing. And so his life was scheduled and so he had purpose. He woke up early in the morning and he knew when he had to exercise and when he had to be on the road so that he could get to his first meeting and to his next meeting. He had purpose in his life. 
And then Jesus turned to him and said, come follow me. And to follow the Lord meant a change of purpose. And to follow Jesus is uh, not easy. Not Jesus. Remember the Bible says of Jesus that the Son of Man doesn't know where he's going to lay his head at night. Jesus doesn't know where he's going to sleep. But he's inviting people to follow. Jesus don't know which town he's going to be in next. We don't know when Jesus is going to circle back and, and come back home. But Jesus is saying, follow. If we're to be honest, even those of us who have been following the Lord for a while, if we are to be honest, it's not always easy to follow the Lord. And it is not always easy to follow the Lord everywhere. There are some places we don't mind following the Lord. I don't mind following the Lord when he's going to do the miracles. I believe that the Lord has done a miracle in this house today. I believe someone came to this place today and you will not leave here until the Lord does that supernatural miracle. Oh boy, you need to receive it. The word is going forth. You need to claim it. If you came for a miracle, the miracle worker is here. And I like to follow the Lord around for the miracle. But I don't like following the Lord around when I hear whispers that they are thinking of stoning him. Or talking bad about him. Or that there is an assassination plot against his life. I don't like to follow when I don't know how it's going to turn out. It's not always easy to follow the Lord. So if we are to be transparently honest in the way Michael was with his testimony today. A grown man, a married man, sharing with us that for the last few months he has had struggle sleeping. And that it has led to some measure of despair. If we were to be transparent like Michael today, we would be able to say, you know... We are not much different from this almost perfect rich man. We would probably struggle to give up some of what we have. And we do struggle with any sense of invitation to follow the Lord. And to follow the Lord blindly. If we are to be honest, it's not as easy as we would like to. To, to, to let people think it is. Now, our text was not a fictional story, neither was it a parable. It was a true story. And in fact, our text was documented in three of the gospel books. Why is this important? Because, remember we said last week and the week before that whenever the Lord is telling a fictional story or a parable... The principles that the Lord are laying down by doing that supersede actually the black and white laws of the Bible. But this text was not a fictional story or a parable. The events of this text actually happened. So the Lord was not laying down a general law. That says, in order to follow him, everybody needs to sell all that we have and give it away. There are times the Lord may challenge some of us to sell something. The Lord may challenge us to give up our career. Or to give up a particular uh, habit. Or to give up. Uh, some, some of our goods in, or assets. The Lord may challenge us to do that. But please hear me. Hear my heart. Don't let some preacher try to use scriptures like this. To try to put some form of condemnation and false humility on you. By telling you that in order to serve the Lord, you need to sell everything you have. It's not true. It's not true. God made us with the desires to also uh, desire things. 
And it's God's delight to bless us with things. It's God's desire to bless us. In fact, you can't give up what you don't have. You can't bless nobody if you're not blessed. If every day all you're living from paycheck to paycheck and from credit card bills paying off credit card bills, you can't really be a blessing to anybody. How can you give people what you don't have? So this text is not about us giving up everything so that we can serve God. That's not what this text is about. We're going to get into what really was the Lord attempting to do here. Now, sometimes we, are, we read the Bible and we miss, we miss how profound the interactions with Jesus is. This is one of the most beautiful yet tragic interaction between Jesus and someone. Here Jesus standing between two time periods. The dispensation of the Old Testament. Where people did things in the vein of spirituality by following laws. And here came Jesus saying, if you want to have a true relationship with God, it's not about laws. It, was, it is about following me. And uh, here this wealthy, almost perfect person missed the greatest opportunity of his life because he was more interested in doing than being. He was more interested in pleasing some man-made steps than being in a relationship with the only one who is truly perfect, the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem with this almost perfect Rich man is that he didn't know who was talking to him. He addressed the Lord as good master or good teacher. And Jesus tried to hint to him that he was more than what he was addressing him as. Jesus says, why are you calling me good? The only one that is truly good is God. The Lord was trying to nudge him to say, hey, if you truly know what you're saying, you would know who you are talking to. Because the one you are talking to is not just a good teacher. He is the good God of glory. And this, this, this interaction was much more than wealth or no wealth. This interaction was about do you want to meet the master? Do you want to have a relationship with the savior of the world? And so we find something quite tragic that's expressed in two of the gospel books. The books of Matthew and Mark. More precisely than it's expressed in our text in Luke chapter 18. So I want to read the same thing twice. In the book of Matthew and the book of Mark. And then we'll talk about this for a second. When the Lord invited this man to sell and to follow him, here's what Matthew's rendition says. Matthew 19 verse 22. But the young man, when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. In Luke, it only says that he was sad, but it did not say that he went away. Mark 10 amplifies it. Verse 22. Interesting, both, both Matthew and Mark is verse 22 of their respective chapters that describe it. Mark 10, 22 says, at this the man's face fell. So it's describing how sad he was. His face fell. Then he went away sad for he had many possessions. Now when this man went away, Jesus could have run after him. And said, please, please, don't go. You're misunderstanding me. Please, please, let's talk some more. 
But what we find is that Jesus stood and watched him walk away. Walk away. And then Jesus said in our text in verse 24, Luke 18, that when Jesus saw that he was walking away, Jesus made this statement. How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now as a boy, I have heard preachers preach on this a lot. And I had a complex. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a complex when I heard this, this, this message, this Bible passage, and preachers preach on this. I had a complex. I thought as a young man, and I had a lot of dreams when I was young, and I went to university, and I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. But I had a complex after reading this. I thought that Jesus did not really like rich people. I thought that it was actually a sin to want to be wealthy. Until I started to really look into this scripture and I realized that the Lord wasn't trying to pit wealthy people against poor people. The Lord wasn't trying to say church should only be filled with poor people or with wealthy people. I believe it's God's will for people to come to church Whatever status in life they are, um, financially and, and educationally and social economically, it's God's will for people to come to church together. I believe that it's God's will. And so I'm going to tell you what I believe is my observation. I believe that uh, uh, what the Lord was emphasizing was that, first of all, we need to understand that wealth comes in different form. Sometimes we are wealthy based on what we own. Some version of wealth is in our children and in our family. And some of us are bankrupt in our family. Some of us have better friends than we have family. And then sometimes our wealth is in our connections, the friendships that we share. Sometimes our wealth is in the kind of People, we get together around every Sunday, like a church group like this. You know you are wealthy if you have a good church to be a part of? Do you understand the wealth in being around people who, who are positive and who can break the word of God in an insightful way that you can learn every single time you come to church? Do you know the kind of wealth that you are having being a church like that? Sometimes we, we think wealth is expressed in, in just having money in the bank. But there's a whole lot of ways to be wealthy. If you share good health, you're wealthy. If you have a good name, you're wealthy. And I believe that the Lord was saying, irrespective of the way your wealth is measured. Hear me, hear me carefully. Once you and I sense that the Lord is pursuing us, I believe that what the Lord was saying is, we do well to respond to his invitation. Because the greatest identity and the greatest purpose we could ever have in this world is wrapped up in our relationship with Jesus. And furthermore, there is a precedence and a law about Jesus. He will not pursue you and I beyond our desire of him. And that's one of the reasons why churches need to be careful that we are not over trying to sell the Lord to people. We need to be careful that we don't have our production so crazy to be entertaining and to be almost falling over people for people to accept the Lord because it goes against the principle of God's word. The Lord will pursue you and allow you to feel his presence. But you have to have enough God in you. And common sense in you. That you will say, 
I sense something I've never felt before. And you say, I am going to pursue what is pursuing me. Praise God. Come on in, folks. Come on. You, you want to stay there? You're okay there? But if you want, you can come anywhere, okay? <laughs> awesome. All right. Just enjoy. It's very important you understand this principle. Let me really make the point. Danny, come here, Danny. Danny. How old are you, Danny? 15. Say, I am 16. I am 16. No, I am 16, okay? I am 16 and you are 15. And I look at you and I say, what a beautiful looking girl. Wow. I am going to pursue her. And so I am starting to pursue her. Okay, this is just an example, okay? I could be her father. I don't want anybody to get me in no trouble. It's just an example. I am pursuing Danny because I like her. And then, but Danny doesn't like me. What do you think Danny is going to do? She is, I am pursuing Danny. Look at me pursuing Danny. What is Danny doing? She's walking away. And I am, Danny, please, Danny. But she is walking away. Let's do it this way. And then I keep pursuing Danny. Danny, come let me buy you some ice cream. But Danny is walking away. What's happening here? I am pursuing, but she is not interested. There is a point when it comes to the Lord, when the Lord pursues, if we turn our back, turn your back now, keep walking. Guess what the Lord does? He stops and he watches you walk away. Because if you don't have enough sense to sense that the pursuit of God is unlike anything you have ever had before, then you will not value who the Lord is. Because the Lord is after relationship. Anybody can say, I do this, I do this, I do Ten Commandments. Come, Danny. You can take your seat. Will you clap your hands for her, please? Anybody, anybody can, can do commandments and do this because we can do things for reasons. I, I, I want to be known, so I do it. Do you know that we can bless people so that we can be credited? Oh, yeah, I'm going to give David $10. But before I give it to him, I want everybody to see, look, hello, everybody, please pay attention. I am giving David $10. Yes, I'm giving, but what is my motive? So that somebody else can say, what a nice pastor. We can do a whole lot of things, good things, for the wrong reasons. But when it comes to relationship, when you truly want to have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then it's not my daddy's religion. It's not my mother's religion. It's not because my pastor tells me to do it. It's because I'm falling in love with my Savior. And when we do church because we love him, then we don't need to do a whole lot of stuff. We don't have to do a whole lot of entertaining. It doesn't have to be the best sermon. It doesn't have to be the best praise theme. Yes, we are going to do our best to be almost perfect. But when we are truly after the Lord for the right reasons, then all of a sudden relationships become more meaningful and nobody can take that from you i am not a pentecostal because my family is a pentecostal i'm not a baptist because my family is baptist i am not a catholic because my family is catholic i'm a christian because i have a personal relationship with the god of glory and if my spouse doesn't want it i want it if my children doesn't want it, I want it. You got to serve God for yourself. Amen. Praise God. So, 
I don't want to end with this uh, uh, almost perfect rich man. I want to talk about another rich man who is captured the next chapter of our text, in the next chapter of our text. But the only difference between this rich man and the almost perfect rich man is that this rich man knows that he was far from perfect. So we're just going to read it and then we're done. I don't need to go through the steps we just did. So we're done in about five minutes or so now, okay? Luke chapter 19 verse 1 gives now the narration of another rich man. But this time a man who is far from being perfect. And let's read it as we now, since we have spent so much time talking about all that should not have happened with a rich man who walked away. Let's now uh, look at now a positive depiction of someone who is pursued by the Lord. Luke 19 verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region. And he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So, he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, the Lord said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Principle number one, when Jesus calls you, you don't respond when you are ready. Principle number one, when Jesus calls you, you respond quickly. Because the timing is as important as the request. So if the Lord calls you and you're like, hey Lord, I, I hear your voice. Check me back later, the Lord. Call me back a little later when I'm less busy. You miss it. You got to learn to move when the Lord is moving. Because if the Lord has to work on your timetable, then it means you are the Lord. So the Lord says to Zacchaeus, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. The Bible says Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Principle number two, when the Lord calls you, you need to be filled with joy and excitement. It's crazy to come to church sometimes and see people who look so sad. And young people too. I see some of our young people nowadays and they, still, they look scary. How can young people look so serious? You know what I'm going to start doing every time I see a young person looking serious? I'm going to look back at you serious. <laughs> if you have had an encounter with the Lord, you should have a joy about you. Right? There needs to be a pleasantness about you. There should be an excitement about you. Do you know who is coming to my house today? Do you know who is coming to my house today? When Jesus visits our church, there should be an excitement. And the excitement shouldn't just be limited to the greeting team. Everybody who gets a chance to be around Jesus should be excited. I see in the States this guy, a short guy named Messi, soccer player, who is... Getting now to be in the States, got a contract. When he walks through the town, everybody is, oh, mercy, mercy, please 
sign, please sign. When I walk into the malls, nobody says nothing. <laughs> and that's okay because I am just me. But when Jesus steps into our midst, there needs to be an excitement. We shouldn't need somebody else to tell us to make a joyful noise. If you know who is around you, it should invoke a sense of joy and excitement. So Zacchaeus was excited that the Lord was coming to his house. But then look at verse 7. But the people, the people were displeased. And here the people now. He has gone to be a guest of a notorious sinner. Isn't it amazing that every time the Lord is trying to pursue people to change their life, all we can see, some people can see, is what people were instead of where God wants to take them. There's always a group of people who have something to say when God is just trying to get a hold of people. But look at Zacchaeus now. Look at Zacchaeus, verse 8. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, Lord, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back. Watch this now. Four times as much. When Jesus saw what this man was willing to do, the Lord said in verse 9, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. And verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, families, and foes, I'm here to tell you, whether you are almost wealthy or you are wealthy, whether you are almost perfect or you have a whole lot of issues, whether you are almost poor or you are very poor, I'm here to bring you good news today. Jesus is visiting Pentab today to give you something that money can't buy. So if you say, Pastor, I have no money, good for you. If you say, Pastor, I have a lot of money, it doesn't matter. What you need today, you don't need any money to acquire it. Jesus wants to take your religion and replace it with a relationship that is so intimate and intense and intriguing that you have never had with anyone before. Oh boy, Jesus wants to exchange your good or your not so good name for the highest name known to mankind. Jesus want to take your, maybe your name, you love your name. Maybe your name is Johnson or Jackson or Jennifer or Something else. But I want you to know Jesus has a better name for you. Because he wants to give you his name. Oh my Lord. I have more good news for you. 
you are in the company of church people who God has been working on so that we are not looking down on you because for all of us here we know that we are at best sinners saved by grace Oh boy, we have good news for you. Here's the good news. The poorest of us in this place can become wealthy if we only have When you have money in the bank, inflation can erode it. When you have two and three and four homes, the value of your homes can go down. A little fire can cause the things you had yesterday to have no value today. Oh, your nice physique that you are sharing today, one doctor's report, and your life can be changed. The family that you love so much, Today you are in a good relationship and tomorrow that person just decides they don't want to be with you anymore. I am telling you every wealth that we have down here can be eroded in a matter of time, in a matter of seconds. But oh my God, when you meet Jesus... When you meet Jesus, when you have a relationship with Jesus, you have a wealth beyond this world. You have something money can't buy. Whether you are married or not, whether you have children or not, whether you have friends or not, whether you have health or not, when you have Jesus, it makes all the difference. There's a wealth that is beyond this world. And so today I have come to give you Jesus. Yes, we have a picnic and we have lots of food being prepared for you. Yes, we have a trade show and you can probably get a job in the next little while. Yes, there are a lot of people here who will come and hug you and let you feel good. But above all of this, we give you Jesus. For he is the reason why we live. He is the reason why we get up in the morning. He is the reason why we have purpose. I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful for my career. I'm thankful for my dreams but most of all I'm thankful for Jesus Sister Lenore will you make your way down uh, Jeff will you hold the hand of Sister Lenore and help her down for me this church has been on a on a path we have been attempting to teach differently we have been attempting to do church differently because we are realizing that it's not the commandments we follow that make us righteous. It's not because we are baptized why we are righteous. It's not the church group we belong to why we are righteous. We are realizing that. And so we have been attempting to create a church that is a safe place. So that someone like Michael can just share with us this morning. Michael, I'm going to be committing to praying for you so much more. Sometimes we see people and because they're big and strong, we don't know how much they hurt. And every grown man you see in this building has a little boy in us. And here's Michael who shared today that pastor was hurting. I've been hurting. But thank God for... A couple who have devoted their lives and have traveled all the way from the Cayman Islands to just spend some time here. I know Tom's life a little. He was an engineer, a businessman, and a pilot. He could be still trying to pursue this world's goods. And maybe he has some of it. 
But thank God he also understands that his life's value means more if he can point someone to Jesus. And one of the things about churches today is that people, people see church as just a, a place to go to and then to go home after a nice sermon. But church needs to be a safe place so that the most broken person can come and find Jesus. So I've been doing my best to preach differently and sometimes preaching differently is not easy. Because the way I was raised and the way some of the folks who I have to pastor are raised, I've had to be trying to undo things in your mind so that we'll understand that we need to focus on the main things. And last week I did my best to preach so hard. And then Monday, Tuesday, you would know how heavy I felt because I kept wanting to myself, God, I wonder if the church, you have allowed me the privilege to pastor, understands my heart. I wonder if they understand that I'm not trying to destroy the valuable things that they have committed to. But that somehow we still need to break the things that stop people from coming to you. And then we had an early morning prayer on Wednesday at 5.30. By the way, some of you have been on vacation all summer long. You haven't been coming on for prayer. Come back for prayer. Come back for early prayer. And sister... Sister Lenore shared a little testimony after the sermon and what happened to her. And she has no idea, but for the rest of that day, her testimony carried me. I just want her to take a few minutes and share that testimony. Come, Sister Lenore, come stand right here just before we close. Share with our folks your testimony. Praise God. Um, last week, a uh, pastor was talking about the two that were praying in the temple. And how one was praying, like, you know, I fast often and I do this and I do that. And then the other one, the publican could even look up to heaven. And he knew he was a sinner. And I've heard that. I've been serving God for 37 years. And I've heard that many, many times. But he gave a challenge at the end of the service, asking, you know, let God search your heart. And so I did during the service. And then I went home for my nap. <laughs> and... Um, I had a dream, and I dreamt that I was standing in at the door of a correctional center with these big, heavy doors, and they started to put this garment over me, and I started to protest, and I said, why do I have to wear this? My attitude in the dream was very not good, and I said, why do I have to wear this? Why do I have to put this on? What have I done? I haven't done nothing wrong, and then they, they kept bringing me into this facility, and I said, is this about my brother? It better not be about my brother. And then they brought me into a back room, and there, there on the cot was my brother, who I haven't seen for 20 years, or even talked to him, or never even tried to read to him, or just because of he's incarcerated in real life. He's done some very wrong things. And there he was laying on the, the cot, and he was he was dying and his face was all caved in and he was just skin and bones and he tried to look up at me and in my dream I couldn't believe what I said I said oh it's you and I woke up and I I got the vision of his like after I woke up I saw that what he looked like again and I said oh my god I have no compassion I said, God, I have no compassion. I don't condone what he's done. But all these years, I just, you know, you did your thing. I did mine. That was what, and even though I love God and serving God, this was the hardness of my heart that God is seeking those that are broken. And that if we don't forgive, no matter how much we come to church or how much we pray or how much we fast and and, and seek him. We cannot forget about those that are broken. And so I had to repent. And I was weeping on the bed. I mean, it was a long session. <laughs> and I was just weeping before God saying, God, how can I have gone 20 years and justify myself? Like he made his choice and I made mine and I made the right choice and he made the wrong choice. Honestly, that's what I was seeing God showing in my heart. And then as I repented, I started interceding in tongues. And I kept saying, 
Don't die, Jimmy. Don't, don't die, Jimmy. Don't die. Don't die in your sin. Don't die angry. And I asked God to send help from the sanctuary to him. And uh, so I called my sister this week. Pastor doesn't know this part. I called my sister this week. First time I tried to try to inquire where my brother was in 20 years. And uh, last time I know he was in jail, in and out of jail all the time for what he does. And anyways, no one knows where he is. We don't know if he's alive or if he's dead. And I'm going home in October. And I just asked this church to pray for me that God, if my brother is alive, that God makes a way that I can hold him and tell him I love him. And I have forgiven him. He hurt me. He hurt my children. And I don't condone anything. But where is the mercy of God? I've got to show that mercy. So would you please pray that? And I just thank God that he, he, you know what? If we ask God and what pastor preached, like it was a challenge. And if we ask him, God will show us because he loves us. And he wants, to, he wants me to be the arms of Jesus for him. And so praise God, just hear that. That's what this church is about. It's not just what happens on Sunday here. It's what happens when you go home. 20 years she hasn't spoken to her brother because of what he has done. It must have been bad. But at the end of the day, we are not the judge. We are not the judge. We don't get to play judge. Today is going to be an amazing day. We have so much prepared for you. We have food, we have fun, we have trade show, fair, we have excitement. And we have a good turnout of people here. And there are people outside already preparing. And I know people are going to drive to come for later. But I would be remiss if we end the summer months and not give people a chance to respond to the Lord who has been pursuing us. So while you're sitting in those online, while you're just watching this, this, this broadcast, if over the last little while you've been coming to this church and you've been listening to this, pre, the, this preacher and the other preachers, and if you've been feeling the Lord tugging at your heart saying he desires to have a relationship with you, I'm not interested in you saying, I go to Pentab. Pentab is my church. It's got to be more than that. You need to reach the place where you can say, I serve the risen Savior. You need to reach the place where you say, I am surrendering all to him. I'm going to ask everybody in the building to stand. Maybe you are a Christian and maybe you're almost perfect. But maybe you know that there's one thing in your life that you need to work on. You know what it is. I'm not even going to try and give you examples of what they could be. But maybe you're almost perfect. But maybe you, you feel good in the fact that you're almost perfect. And because of that, it stops you from going to the next level. Because when you look around at others, you are far ahead of them. And maybe because you compare yourself with others, you feel good about your life. Maybe God wants you to go to another level, but you've been stuck. Maybe you are like Zacchaeus. And maybe there's not much good about your life. But maybe deep down you want to change and you have been trying to change, but it has not happened on your own. Maybe you have honored this church and you come as often as you can and you give as much as you can. Maybe you've done a lot of good things. Today, before we, have, before we go outside and have fun, I want today to be a different Sunday. I know we are all dressed down, but I just want today to be a different Sunday. I want today to be a real day for everyone, for every young person, 
for our musicians, for everyone in this building. I'd like to be a pastor where if the Lord reads the report card at the end of today's service, I'd like to be able to say, Lord, we here we are and hear the Lord say, well done. And I think Michael has set the climate for this service in his transparency. I know some of you are more comfortable here than others. Maybe this is your first time or first few times. But I wonder if today we can have some people who feel the Lord pursuing you. I wonder if we could have some people who will, as a gesture to say, I am going to respond to the pursuit of the Lord. I wonder if there's some people who will just say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to make a physical step that is a demonstration of what's happening on the inside of me spiritually. I'm going to just step out and today I'm just going to go and I'm going to confess my sins and I'm going to confess my love for the Lord and my faith in Him. And today, after today, I want to be known as a Christian, a follower of Christ. Not, not, not just someone who is acquainted with the Lord. Not just someone who goes to church. But today, after today, I want to be known as a child of the King. I wonder if right now I can ask as many of you who would like to come with no one praying for you but just by yourself. I wonder if we will just use this front area if at all possible and invite people to just come to the front and let's as a family just say we're doing this together. I wonder can I invite you now to come and make your way forward please. Come as close as you can to the front here and make a choice to say, I want to serve the Lord today. Don't wait on anybody else. Come quickly. Zacchaeus, come quickly. Respond right away. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Anybody else? Whether it's your first time, whether you're a core member, whether you're in between, whether you're almost there, or whether you feel so unworthy. Will you come? 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 Anybody else to come? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else will come and surrender to him? Is there anybody else? Anybody else who will say today, 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 today. I'm not going to wait for tomorrow to today while the group sings anybody else want to come if you want to come 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 come
We invite you to stand with us, everybody, whether you're in the front or in the building anywhere. Will you stand, please? Please stand. And I want you to listen to me. Only God knows your heart and knows the response you made today. And I believe in my heart that there are people who didn't come to the actual front because of your own preference. But you have given your heart to the Lord. I believe that there are people online who have given your heart to the Lord. Please listen to me. The greatest thing you can give to the Lord is your heart. And when you give it to him, you have made a conscious decision that I am serving the Lord. Danny, sweetheart, 15 years old, but I know you have given your heart to the Lord. And that decision is so beautiful. And as you continue high school and then college, Talia, I know you have given your heart to the Lord. It's a decision you have made. I want to encourage all of our young people, and I know we kept the children in today. You're not too young if you can sense this moment. If you have done it in your heart, the Lord understands and recognizes it. I want to encourage you, take this seriously. Don't go backwards. Don't go backwards. The Lord, it must be one of the worst sights. Brother William, it must be one of the worst sights for the Lord to watch this almost perfect ruler walk away. And the only thing the Lord sees is the back of him. I want to challenge all of our young men. Understand, son, this is about you and God. We either run to the Lord or we run away from him. If we run to him, he will make more steps towards us. But if we turn our back, if we do not value who he is, he will respect us enough to allow us to walk away from his presence. But I'm telling you, there is no worse place upon this world than to be outside of the presence of God. So I want to encourage everyone who has made a, a decision today, make this between you and the Lord, not between you and the pastor and you and the church. We are here to facilitate, and so we have different means. We have cards at the front. We have online. However you would like to document your experience so we can work with you, please do so. At the end of the service today, we're just about now, we're going to be collecting some offering, give you a chance to give, and maybe there are some people who you say you're going to give everything in your bank account. Good for you. But we also want to give people a chance to be baptized today. For some of you, you may say, what is baptism? Baptism is a public demonstration that you have given your heart to the Lord. Baptism is not to save you. The only one who can save you is Jesus Christ. And when you confess him, he's faithful and just to forgive you, to cleanse you, to wash you, and to receive you as his own. But the next step is to say, I want to be baptized. Why? Because we also need to publicly declare whose side we're on. We can't do this thing just in private and just say it's just between me and the Lord. Baptism is a way to say, I am now one of them. You can count on me. I am part of the church. I'm part of the kingdom. And so if you, if you came today and you weren't sure, but you're like, you know what? Maybe this is as good a day as possible. We want to give you a chance to be baptized today. 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 We have clean clothes, sweatpants, we have shirts for you, we have dried towels for you. And so, you can be baptized today, you come and see any of the ministers, any of the leaders, and they will give you direction as to what to do. 
And then right after we give in the offering, we are going to make ourselves uh, our way towards the picnic area. The picnic area, the whole, you will notice the crowd, you will see the barbecue area, there's going to be a soccer a tournament at some point, there's going to be a uh, different race and different kind of competition, and then you will see the job fair section as well. So well, please, you don't even need to get in your car, just follow the crowd and God will help you. I'm going to invite those who were at the front now to go back to your seats so that the folks with the offering can come and stand in, in a place of um, uh, where they can receive the offering. Come, offering people, come and stand here. Stand, everybody. Stand with us. Stand with us. Now, let me be very clear with you. I am not asking you to sell your house and give the money to the church. I'm not asking you to give the keys of your car to the church. I'm not asking you to empty your bank account and give all your money to the church. I'm not asking any of that. But we are asking that you give as the Lord lays on your heart to give. You have different ways to give. You can come down here and we have an internet machine. There we have traditional bags. As well as you can give online, look on the screen, uh, and you can give e-transfer however you'd like to give. The praise team is going to lead us in giving. And then after you have given, we want you to start to make your way out to the area towards the baptismal area. If you'd like to be baptized, just speak to someone. They'll organize you. And then... Um, Pastor Donovan, can you prepare to do some baptisms, please? And then we're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord outside. God bless you, everybody. Let's give. Let's worship. Come on.